Since this episode of The New Mind was recorded, the criminal charges against George Roberts have been dropped. Um, Please do enjoy this episode. Although there are going to be some triggering subjects coming up, um, I want you to know that you can contact me at info at Ella McChrystal if you are triggered by anything that comes up in this episode. Um, My job here was to show another side of the story um, and I wanted to give George a platform to share that side of the story so that we could have the full perspective. Obviously, uh, there may be people listening to this that feel strongly that I shouldn't have given George the space. Um, As I said at the beginning, the criminal charges have been dropped and I do believe that in order to fully connect as communities and as in order to fully understand each other, we must hear all sides of a story. Enjoy the episode. Hi, I'm Ella McChrystal and this is The New Mind. Today's guest is George Roberts from Maths Season 7. That's Maths UK. Um, some of you will have an opinion about George based on some press that he received off the back of being on the show. And today I want to give George the opportunity to tell his side of the story. And I've seen so many different facets to his personality from the sort of conversations we've had and the time we spent together today. And I'm going to share it with you all today. And I know that you're all very receptive to the guests that I've had on so far. And I know it's going to be the same with George. And I'm really honoured to have him on today. So welcome, George. You're back in the room. <laughs> back in the room. <laughs> Sorry, I waffled on for at least half an hour there. <laughs> let's be serious. Let's be serious. serious. No, let's not be serious because it's all <sighs> been too serious for you. It's been very quiet. Yes, it's been a very quiet 12 months. Yeah. So why don't we just go in at the deep end and we'll work our way through it. So We'll try and fill it. We'll try and fill it up. So let's talk about okay. what's happened over the last 12 months, which is you were on Maths. Everybody knows that. Um, well, people have watched it, yeah. People that watched it, Maths UK yeah. season seven. Mm-hmm. Um, and, well, to, how did that happen, first of all? How did you become a cast member? So... I got I got a little DM. Mm-hmm. I mean, how the hell she found me? I don't know. She found me from like a, a modeling page that I just set oh, okay. up because I wanted to keep my private life and work life separate. And I was starting to do quite a bit of modeling at that time. And I thought, you know, that that's cool. We'll we'll we'll, we'll do that. And she found me through there. And then um, it was a whirlwind. Within a couple of weeks, I'd done like a, a video interview. And then uh, when I found out what it was, I thought. Oh, can't do any harm to go through this process it seems quite interesting so I did that and then I went down to London uh, and I met with them and then literally two days after that they were saying that we we, we like you we want to find you somebody da, 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 da. Uh, that was uh, it start, the first message was February the 13th I think just before Valentine's Day was it a Friday I mean just asking because of what then happened oh my god I don't know <laughs> I should have checked that. You should have checked. I should know what day of the week it is when I get <laughs> shit like that. Um, but, 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 Friday yeah. the 13th. Da, na, na. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, so uh, that that was that. And within, literally, it's like f- February 13th, something like that. And then end of February had the, the meetings had been done to London. And then April the 5th, I was walking down the aisle to marry her. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is funny because... You've got to either laugh or cry. I, I see it like that now. Yeah. For during it and for like nine months after, I didn't see the funny side of it. No, because it's let, only let, been recently that I've had to, managed to gather gather my thoughts and go, Jesus Christ, why do you let all that shit affect you? Because well, it was you serious. Know the truth and my 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 circle knows my truth. But but that okay. Let for those that don't know, because some mm. people will be listening to this have never watched Maths. George was on Married at First Sight, which is a reality TV show that pairs strangers together. They marry on the day that they meet. Mm-hmm. They oh, well, I say marry, but it's like the unofficial getting married. It's marriage yeah, yeah. for the show. Role play. Role play. It all looks very real and feels very scary, no doubt. Oh, yeah. But then you spend what is it, three months together? 
it's weird because you're still as nervous as you would be on your of wedding course. day. Of course. Well, it's more nervous because you've never well, bloody seen got, this like, person. you've got 50 cameras on you. Yeah. You've got people that you don't know sat on the other side of the yeah. thing looking at you, checking you out, making a judgment straight away. Of course. Away. And you know this is going to be shown to the nation. <laughs> and I'm the guy that rocks up. I was waiting for three hours for her to turn up to the altar. Wow. Not her fault because there was like camera shots and yes. <laughs> looking shots and walking shots and la 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 car shots and, and everything like that um and I, I do actually just just popped it i just remember her dad having such a friendly face Aww. but i i was there at the altar and do you know what the one thing she got out of it was i'd had a chicken sandwich <laughs> about an hour before and i had a bit of chicken in my tea i was like hey how are you she's like, it's not, it's not chicken <laughs> So you had chicken in your teeth. Mm -hmm. Great start to a beautiful relationship. Yeah, then I told her I had four kids. Wow. Was that very quickly you told her that? I just assumed that they would pair me up with somebody who was country, yeah. wellies, yeah. had kids. Um, and oh, it was great for TV, wasn't it? But, but from the perspective of, of cameras, I mean, you were already modelling. you got two very good looking people, pair them yeah. together and it makes good TV. The rest of it I get, wasn't I, in place. Now I see why they did it. Um, it was kind of, yeah. If it, The next series, if I decide to watch it, yeah. I haven't watched all of the series that I'm on yet. I'm, I'm missing quite a few episodes. But if I do decide to watch the next series, I will watch it in a completely different course, light yeah. to Joe Public might, yeah. might watch it. Yeah. Because you know what's happening behind the scenes. Well, it's the same for me what now. Goes into it. You know, yeah. because you're one of. Three well, you've had a lot so from like me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt, and other yeah. people that you've spoken yeah. to about actually what is Matt's what is going real on. life. Yeah. It's, it's completely different. To and what... it gives you an insight into all reality TV, yeah. actually. And if you think you cram a whole day into an hour. Yeah. And there must be 30, 40, 50 hours worth of filming whether it's like on your own. I mean, the, the crew is just huge. How, how many and, are you in a room? And to be fair, all of them were, were wonderful. Huh? How many of the crew are in the room when you're sort of dinner partying? Dinner partying? <clears throat> probably 50. I mean, that's the bit that people don't see and they don't I, I understand. Might get it, I might get it wrong. No, but Thomas but, said about the same, Thomas Hartley. Yeah, there's about 50 people, but about 30 cameras on all different angles. And it's, it's and it's weird because sometimes you're just sat there, you're completely oblivious and you're like, oh God, this this, this food's actually warm tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's been sat there for hours. Yeah. Um, and then you just feel a camera just move and zoom into you and you're like, oh shit, what have I done? What have I said? Yes. I was just eating. So what's that all yeah. about? Or what did I say to that? I feel like being shown up at school. Yeah. So it's like, phew, highlight. Yeah. And like, oh, okay. Automatically, I don't care how confident you are. You're going to know that that's there. Yes. There's going to be some level of anxiety. And it's weird because now looking back at it, I was right to feel that way, but I was actually myself. And I can see why they do all these different angles and stuff now because they pick and choose what they want to show. Yeah. Because like you say, you've got a whole day's worth of filming put into an hour. It's impossible to have a complete narrative no, of the situation. Exactly. And I think um I'll be honest with you, one of my friends watches the show and she I think it was about Matt. I said, Oh, I've had Matt on actually and she went, oh, I don't like him. And I went, No, 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 no. She she just she doesn't know him. Doesn't know him. He's a nice guy. But but the way and I and he's actually become a friend. Mm. No, I would say that Matt is a friend now. Um, and I'm, I dare say that after you and I go to see Thomas Hartley as Pam Sandwich. Can't wait for that. In Birmingham. September we shall 30th. also be friends. <laughs> yeah. If we're not friends, we'll be enemies. <laughs> There'll be no in between after a night out But you like might that. not be friends with Tom, but you might be friends with Pam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or vice versa. I mean, I must admit, everyone I've met so far off the show, I've really liked. And I think what's interesting is, uh, as much as, as, as a therapist, I don't judge people anyway, because yeah. you can't. You've got to look at the broader perspective with everybody. Mm. All of you I've really liked. And actually, the three of you are the, the three main sort of contentious characters, I'd say. You know, I don't know if what had happened afterwards hadn't happened, whether there would be this sort of the main sort of three spiky characters as such. But mm. what happened afterwards, 
really has changed your life for the last year and and, and it's been very very devastating as well so you're on the show we we kind of get that it's um structured is a good word the show is structured well, that's polite <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm being polite so Fuck so we know. don't get yeah. sued um yeah structured the show is structured and they want to get their ratings they want to get their viewers they want it to be uh you know i guess leave people wanting more so they're gonna make it as spiky as possible to and get that that's a, exactly when, when you go into your voxes and you talk about stuff and whatever can you explain what a vox is for those that don't know i don't know what vox means yeah but on the <laughs> but show it means that you're going to do like a video on your own yeah so like i do one on my own or i might do one with april where you have a camera pointing at you and then there's a producer behind asking questions yes generally it's the same to topic with like 15 questions answered in 15 different ways so you get 15 maybe slightly different answers yeah i got to the point where i was like i've just told you that. <laughs> yeah please like, stop <laughs> really <laughs> um but then but then they started doing stuff like oh can you say that, but put a little bit of jeopardy into it? They love that word. Bit of jeopardy, bit of like. So they're asking cliffhang. you to spike it up. Yeah. And then almost telling you, like, there was one situation which I will, com which th there's many situations that I regret, but one that I do really, really regret was when we were at the retreat and I was um, lying on the bed with April. It's all, you know, set up and what yeah. have you. We weren't really getting on at the time. Um, and it was about Thomas and it started off like well look you two need to kind of work it out get through it and talk about it have some you know chat and i can't it, it's come back to me now and i can't remember the exact words but it was they made me say something really really bad about him and i just and i and it, and, it, and that was shown on the television and i was right. like Just a load of crap. It's absolutely load of crap because they make you, they goad you into doing stuff and like, let's do it again, let's do it again, record, record. If they're not happy with it, it's not reality TV because remember, reality TV should be real time. Yeah, TV. it should exactly that. Like, like this is. So what if somebody um, says something stupid or gets something wrong? Yeah, but that's the truth. That's the truth. Don't go back, rewind, and do it, and then pump them up with a load of crap to make it look even worse. And then and let's, and, let's and give them words to use. And it's so important to remember that that is what's actually happening. You're the I, mm. I've spoken to plenty of people now that tell me about what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. So I know that this is true. And I know that also you were sought out. You were found. Some people auditioned, but a lot of people didn't. So you were plucked out. You'll you'll look good with this person that we've got. Mm. Um, Matt and Gemma are a perfect example of we've got Gemma first. Now we need Matt. Matt mm. fits Gemma perfect sort of tattoos and all that kind of hair. And, and, and all and all that's going on is is that first picture. It is when that. they're pictured together, going, "Oh, you've been matched with such and such." Well, this is what and, I'm the, saying, and the viewers yeah. see that and they go, "Oh, yeah, yeah." Both beautiful people, yeah. not right for each other, Correct. but both. Both beautiful, beautiful people, yeah. and they looked like they'd be it's like, the same "Oh with my you god, in April. this is going to be a huge, massive explosion of of greatness." And and on TV, that's what we want. We want yeah. to be sold. Oh wow, these two match perfectly. Well, they, they take you to there, and then comes all the jeopardy, the ma manipulation, all the crap that yeah. just makes it turn into a a shit show. <laughs> yeah, shit, shit show. and and it, and it is because it it draws people in. Mm. You know, I think for me, any good so you think of EastEnders, any good soap opera has got the da -dum moment at the end yeah. where you can't wait to tune into the next episode. And oh, that's really what they've done. Peg. Oh, oh RIP Peggy. Oh, oh God. Love her. I've just traumatized him. Yeah. <laughs> just brought back his love for Peggy. <laughs> but it's all right. Alfie's here. <laughs> <laughs> he obviously watches EastEnders. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I've literally just got back into it because my son and his girlfriend watch EastEnders. And there's people that are coming back. Like Sharon's back. I thought she died. I mean, this Sharon never died. What's wrong well, with I you? I don't know. Was she with... <laughs> it was Dirty Den that died. That was their dad. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going back to like year 2000. <laughs> but Sharon's come back. Did Sharon die? She doesn't look any different. Well, Sharon, actually, I'll tell you something. If we're talking about Letitia Dean, Letitia, if you're listening, I'm sorry for George's ignorance here. I'm Letitia sorry. I'm glad you didn't die. <laughs> 
but you look incredible. <laughs> but, but, and I think you look. But she's lost about fifteen stone. She looks incredible. Well, she does look incredible because she's lost all of her weight. She, yeah. bless her, she she's worked really hard. She was she looks never. Amazing. I'm, I'm sure she wasn't. And dead. I'm all. I, I like, like Phil Mitchell's still there. I mean, God. What? What? <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> but, but it's like, he's, st- and I can't remember, like 20 years on, I'm seeing like the, the characters same. come back. Yeah. Like, Kat, I, I left when like Cat Slater was around and all that. And they've all gone and they've all come yeah. back again. I love it. Well, let I, me I've, tell you. I've literally just got back into it. Let me tell you, I um I was the biggest fan of EastEnders. I was seven when EastEnders came out. So in 19... Are you 19... allowed to watch it at seven? <laughs> no, well, I don't know. In 1912. That's when the watershed was like 5pm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was watching it at seven. It's my favourite TV <clears throat> programme. I watched it forever and ever. And I haven't seen it because I, I work evening, so I haven't seen it for such a long time. But I would be so easily sucked back into it because with EastEnders, a bit like Coronation Street, nothing ever changes. Do you know what I got from that? That I'm incredibly old. <laughs> No, but there's there's things like like I play. You can go back and watch on demand. Oh, the, the technophobe thing. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's not just live TV anymore. <laughs> Have you got one of those telephones where you go wow wow? I love those wow. telephones. Yeah. We need them back. That was uh, when life was good. Do you know what I think of that? When you go nine nine nine, it took so long to go back. It's like <laughs> the person that you're at. You're, 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 the emergency's finished because it was a round. It was right at the end. Round. By that time, you've lost your blue Peter badge. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Blue Peter again something oh, we spoke about off camera we both huge. Were fans. love it I didn't get my badge from you you said you're going to bring one I can't find it <laughs> I did actually go into the garage to go through my boxes to try and find it ah oh, at uh, least you did that it's the thought that counts so okay at what point George did you feel that this isn't quite what I expected it to be how long into uh, being with April and doing the show, did you think, do you know what? This isn't quite what I expected. It's weird because you're in it from the start and you've got this like excitement and anticipation of everything. You don't kind of see it happening to start with. Yeah. You're kind of like it gradually, gradually, but during that time where you're gradually seeing how the show is being produced, you're then building a relationship this side with the person yeah you're with, yeah 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 and you're constantly talking and trying to counteract that and obviously what April... a weird situation oh it's fucked it's literally fucked like if if i wasn't with april i'd have canned off the production side of stuff if if i if there wasn't the production me and april would have canned it off it was it was that level of getting involved in your yes. relationship that yes makes you stay entwined and they were like, oh, you're doing really well. This is great and fantastic. And going back to the whole um, thing with PJ and, and whatever, I had a really, there were some amazing moments. About 90% of it was great. Yeah. And, you know, I had a, a lovely relationship with, with, with Adrian through most of it and with everybody. And, you know, Zoe, there was, there was, there was I, I remember Zoe fondly because when we both turned up at the stag party, we're like, yeah, I might come across as confident. She might come across as confident, but we were like, oh, fuck, what's this? <laughs> yeah, um, hold we, my hand. And we, they <laughs> made us do this fake dancing scene, which didn't really get shown. And I just we, I just grabbed her and said, Look, it's going to be all right. We'll, we'll do this Aww. and whatever. And there will always be that bond b- between us. But And, 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 and I've, got, I've got no bad word to say against any of the cast um because it's all heat in the heat of the moment stuff yeah 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 but you kind of you kind of think oh well why didn't they show all of this cool stuff and our apartment was busy with people coming in and you, you know, just don't see that do you no you never you, you don't you don't see any of it you don't Which you is don't such see a shame. and a lot happens off camera and then when you get to being on camera either whatever's happened has been quashed and dealt with yeah or it's kind of flared up it hasn't been dealt with and then suddenly the cameras are rolling they throw some wine and booze at you and then it just goes it explodes like it did not need to do that that did not need to happen but it does and so does when you say that like it's heat of the moment i suppose everybody's in that moment together 
the next day. So again, for those that haven't watched it, there's the couples that get together and then once a week there's the uh, dinner party and then the commitment ceremony, yeah. right? Yeah. So you have this dinner party where the, all of the couples get together mm-hmm. and then the commitment ceremony where you're with the experts on the couch mm-hmm. and they ask you certain questions and it's, it's sort of a uh, an appraisal of the relationship so and far. And it's completely led by the couch. Yes, completely yeah. led by the couch. Yeah. Okay. So at the dinner parties, there's there's food, there's alcohol, and there, uh, from what I've been told, there's the odd producer whispering in an ear to try and oh, yeah. provoke something. And then what we see on camera is the provocation coming to life. Okay. First example of where I got a bit of shit. Yeah. Honeymoon. Ah, so this is a point where I said to you before, where did you feel like this might not be quite <laughs> right? The honeymoon scene this is was a big one. Of them. Yeah. But I didn't know it at the time. Yes. Until I watched it back on TV and then got shit. Yeah. Um, George, you're a shit stirring fuck and all of this kind of stuff. I yes. mean, I've read you some messages, they're, they're not very nice. Yeah. But this was. This and you was do, a classic... can I just stop you there, just to be yeah. clear? George said that very briefly, but I have heard the messages that George has received off the back of the show and they are disgusting. And he may well share some of them with us. He may not, but I've seen them. I can, I can clarify. Well, look out of, out of the well over a hundred thousand messages, there's a few shit ones. And they're horrible. And there are some lovely people out there that have thrown support and everything. Yeah. But at the beginning I was making a point of reading everything and I can't, I kind of don't do that now. No, you can't. I can't. I I don't have the capacity because I'm I'm channeled into you know focusing on my kids and my work now. But I don't get anything bad anymore. But you've heard some of the ones that, yes. I, that I had. Bloody awful. Um, so there was the the honeymoon incident where um, April had a inverted commas peck <laughs> with uh, another holiday. Uh, what are they called? <laughs> what would you what would you call someone? <laughs> <laughs> what even was that? A holiday. Uh. A, a holiday. Uh, <laughs> uh, t- not tourists, like a holiday. Another hotelian person. Right. <laughs> what? Somebody was in the same hotel as hotelian. us. Right? So, oh, <laughs> another guest. Oh my god! Why didn't I go there for start? With? Anyway, so <laughs> we had this guest. We we had this guest. I didn't. She did. <laughs> I definitely didn't have a guest. <laughs> you were not involved. I, I went away to do um, uh, a Vox. Yes. Uh, I came back and like she was really upset uh, and whatever. And it was like, oh, yeah, they'd be kissing a hot tub. At that point, you'd say, oh, we played a game, Truth or Dare. Or um, um, uh, what's the other game? Kind of, uh, I ever, ever, ever have I? Have I ever, ever done ever, this ever, or ever, that? Yeah. yeah. Nothing is mentioned at that point. Um, but it was very sheepish and... When I was doing my Vox, I looked down from the balcony and I could see that all these three people were very close in the hot tub. And they, they weren't playing a game of truth or dare, is that fair to say? Were they playing no, a game because, of truth like, or dare? Okay, right. You turn up to the hot tub and I say to you, oh, a little bit upset. And then the only reason why I find out is when I, I she looked a bit upset and, she, and the, the other person was like, oh, she's been missing you. And I'm like, okay. Um, gave her a, a hug and... Uh, uh, a kiss and whatever and saying everything all right and then joking me this other person was like not the only one she's kissed in the hot tub tonight i was like right okay and i knew from when i looked down from the balcony it looked a bit sheepish so like, it was a bit hot in the hot tub is yeah what we will say yeah that's and what we like, can say april goes oh it's just a peck and then i i spoke to the, the guests anyway it, it, so there's it, it, it a came. scene on 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 your honeymoon so bear in mind how long have you actually known april at this point 48 hours okay so f- after 48 hours there's a scene on your honeymoon in a hot tub april has done some truth or dare very hot hot tub she didn't do truth or dare. She but just, she said it was a swingers hotel is it interesting so it's a swingers hotel yeah and i knew that because when we first arrived i came down the steps and this this um oh my god how am i, how am I allowed to like it, he, he he came he's about six foot six and his wife was there and and he was like, hey, <laughs> everybody was looking at us like fresh meat. And I was like, something's not right here. <laughs> and he came up, he's like, oh, room 202, like 10 o'clock. 
if you guys fancy a bit of so this is a couples hotel oh. that do extra well, it was called couples retreat okay so we're in a very open-minded you know couples is? retreat yeah it's like is it actually like, known for being it's like swingers? naughty sandals sandals so, sandals the, <laughs> the chain of oh we see yeah. like the old people i got paid 20 quid for that and you've just completely missed it <laughs> i thought sandals was for oaps yeah yeah that's just a naughty one like sandals but, you know, but no they're not chil- oaps it's like no children like, yeah i, I see yeah, what you mean yeah you go like, oh have a <laughs> Have a good time at Sandals. Let's have a good time. Have a good time, <laughs> a a good time yeah, yeah, yeah. baby. So April was having a good time while you yeah. were recording and your box. Yeah, and she was box. upset about it. And then in the morning, it was like uh, the producer just... Like, so didn't you want to leave? Huh? Am I right in thinking at that point you wanted to leave? because you? Oh, the next morning, I tried to get on a bus to Bob Marley's house <laughs> in, Jamaica, in Jamaica. I thought, do you know what? It's been about 20 years. I'll go there and see what it's all about and just get out of the resort and i got i got you know stopped by the producer where are you going what are you doing i'm like i'm going to bob marley's house i don't want to be involved today i'm just getting out of here just get yeah. my own space yeah uh we're not insured for you to leave the resort and i'm like uh-huh. i could go online and get my own insurance it's like no 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 it was, it was just so you were caved in oh yeah the, the whole way through you're kind of captive yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and it's like, do this, do that, be there, be this. But did you, yeah. am I right? I don't know if I'm, because again, I don't know if I'm remembering this right from the show, but mm. she's in the hot tub. She does the, I'm going to say an inverted yeah. commas, truth or death. That's where we're getting from. So the producer then says, oh, like April's got something to say. And it was like, she turned up with a bottle of fizz or whatever. And then we had to do this whole scene where I'm lying on the bed going, oh, uh, yeah. What they didn't show was me having a conversation with her and I'd been to, cause I couldn't go to Bob's house. I went to the only other place, which wasn't the resort and the all inclusive, like um, drink till you die sort of place was there was a little <laughs> gift shop. And in the gift shop, um, there's a tradition in Jamaica with a, a particular type of jewelry. It can be a ring, it can be a bracelet and it can be uh, a necklace where, where the, where the clasp comes together, you wear it in a certain way. So I got her a bracelet, which showed, look, I get it. That's fine. If you're into both or what, well, I, I don't know where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah. But all I need to know is from you, if you find it hard to talk or struggle, you can just you tell me by wearing this bracelet. I mean, it's fucking $300. Wow. Like After 48 hours of knowing her. There ain't much in that gift shop. You either go big <laughs> or you get a stick of rock. <laughs> right so <laughs> so and it was this bracelet which um the, the particular pattern of the way that the, the symbol goes if it's pointing up your arm it means that you have love going into your heart so you're taken and this is like a tradition in Jamaica. and if it goes the other way i'm open to love i so see i want to get love or i've got love I and i said well here's the bracelet you can wear it. they didn't show any of that and there was right. me forgiving her on there saying, look, it's, it's absolutely fine. All they said, all they showed was the bit where I ended up apologizing for overreacting. Now, that's a classic example of where they showed like a minute yes. of like an hour's worth. Yeah. And then I like, I gave this sentiment to her and, da, 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 and it was absolutely fine. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and then we come back to the dinner party. This is, I'm going back 20 minutes now for where this actually started. <laughs> yeah. um, so the first meet and greet where um, we all meet each other for the first time. Some of us have met each other in the hotel before and, and such and such. Can I just the boys have met together. This, I'm so sorry because I know you're on a, on a roll. Can I just say that, <laughs> that April did do something in the, because some people wouldn't have watched it. So they won't have a clue. Oh, what she the did. Next yeah, yeah, she yeah. did something in the, the hot tub with some people George was absolute aware of choice. it. Yeah, yeah, absolute yeah. choice. George was yeah. aware of it. Understandably, wasn't sure what the heck was going on. Yeah. Q dinner party. Q dinner party. So, two days before the dinner party, we're all in the hotel. People are coming backwards and forwards. All the guys have met before, and of course, because all you the have girls the, have met before. Yeah. Stag do Hendy yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, I've been in the hotel. Like I started my journey with Richie, lovely guy. Which one was Richie? The, the, the rocker. Rocker. He got married to Lara. 
Oh yes, they went I do out, remember. Like, yeah, I think yeah, about yeah. Three weeks in or two. Yes, two yes, weeks I in. remember. I do remember. Both yeah. lovely people. Yeah. Obviously, not right for each other. Yeah. But um, I started my journey with Richie, and um, we were together before like the weddings because we got married at the same place or whatever. Had the night before, we went into town, had a few beers. Lovely bloke, and um, I'd not really spoken to anybody else until we got to the hotel, and then I spoke to Richie and. Uh, I kind of explained what happened to him. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. But I know that in the past, I've been very black and white. I know this scene you're talking about, yeah. And I should. But I'd spoken to him the night before. I was like, yeah, you know, it's it, it, we, we've had the situation, but we've dealt with it. And I've, and I've learned a lot about myself as to not be so black and white, hence Mr. Grey, and just sort of say, right, okay, let's roll with it. There's... There's obviously a reason why we're together. It's a hiccup. We don't really, really know each other yet. We've both got a load of pressure on us. Pressure cookers can pop, um, but it's it's how we deal with it and how we come back together to, to to make it work. Absolutely fine. Done. And this one producer, I won't mention uh, the name. Yes. Uh, because I think that would be that would be out of order, and I don't know where I stand. <laughs> yeah. Four. He came over to me. And I was sat with Richie because they wanted to have us talking because obviously we had that initial um, contact together at the beginning. He said, look, people are talking about the whole hot tub thing. I think it'd be good if you just came out with it, told Richie about it and say, you know, we've dealt with it. And I said, well, we had this conversation last night. I don't don't know why we're having it now. (laughs) Yeah, "Yeah, but the viewers at home don't know what's going on. You've got to think about it. The viewers at home don't know that you know, you've had this conversation. So you've got to tell him again. You need to tell him again. Oh, God. But what did they get from that conversation? The part that they used was, just to go in the hot tub, I could have ripped the ring off. Because that's how I felt. Yeah. Initially, that was my emotion. Yeah. But the days afterwards, it was fine. And during those days afterwards, we came, April and I became so close. She talked to me about her family, her past, her history. And I, I opened up about my own family and past and history. And like, you know, past relationships and all, all, all the stuff that you talk about when yeah. you've got like a 12 hour plane journey and you're with somebody 24 seven. And there was things that she told me, she's been open about it now so I can talk about it, like her eating disorders and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, and all of this stuff with her mom and, uh, and what have you. And on, on all of that is, is, is very private. Yeah. And, but you know, something like the hot tub is going to be open. And then they made us film a scene saying, you know, we'll go in like a, uh, a united front and all of that kind of stuff. And, and what's private stays private. All the private stuff was her eating disorders, her family and all of this. And my family, um, you know, my dad being, well, my, my pops being unwell. Yeah. And all of that stays private. The hot tub thing is not an issue because we've dealt with it. And I've spoken to Richie. So they, they filmed me saying, you know, private's private and we keep that to ourselves because we bonded over our, our lives and journey and we've got to know each other a lot more. And they used that snippet, but then made me speak to Richie on the show and then go, well, they've been talking over there. I think you should speak to Lara now. So I'll go to Lara to all this. Oh yeah, she kissed a girl in the hot tub. And everybody on in social and Instagram is going, <laughs> George is spilling the tea, all of this kind of stuff. And what a, what a jerk. Keeping it private, are you? You fucking prick. And it's like, oh my God, they made me say that. And the private stuff's fucking way worse than that. Yeah, like it's yeah. way more important yeah. and it's way more private. Yeah. That stuff's not private because it's common knowledge. So that's The private heavily... stuff is her life, my life. Yeah. Ha- like proper deep conversations. That was the private stuff. Not the frolicking with a girl in a hot tub. Like, So it's blended together to make it look a certain way. Make me look like a... You got bleep on this, right? <laughs> you can say whatever you like. Twat. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go bigger, but yeah. <laughs> I know what you were going to do. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you were going to say. <laughs> I think what's really interesting is I'm hearing the same stories from people from the show, so we know that there's a theme here. Who else's wife fucked off with a girl? <laughs> well, apart from that bit, <laughs> apart from that bit, <laughs> that bit I've not heard before. I must admit, yeah. but the the way that it's crafted and yeah. structured appears to be a theme i'm hearing it again and again and so they've got a script that's the only way i can think about it they've got a script and then they cast people for that yeah 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 that's what i've said yeah what kind of person do we want with somebody else 
and how we're going to build a narrative to make them have a really fuck because every couple's got to have a rocky road yeah like you look at shanita and jordan yeah. love them both absolutely yeah. lovely people they had it plain sailing and then it got rocky at the end yeah you're right yeah like jordan struggled like ev and, and i'm sure she needs to probably struggle at some point yeah admittedly and he knows this because i'll add an open conversation with him he fucked up a little bit at the end with yeah. not being as honest about how he felt earlier yes and shanita was unaware but he still came out and said it yeah and and that was but unfortunately it was right at the end lovely lovely people both of them but i cannot tell you how that environment makes you go absolutely cuckoo yeah i'm sure because it's like a whirlwind you've got producers saying this producer saying that people get apartments flipping people dumb. it's like excuse me can i just have fucking five minutes to work yes. out what i'm doing like, yeah and how i feel but you don't get that space you don't no you don't That's because you're constantly mindful you right you get a text message be downstairs in five minutes you're doing a something shots or getting ready shots and da, 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 like oh shit i don't think i could do it i think i'd walk out and leave i tried i had a 500 pound uber from <laughs> oh canary wharf to worcester about three o'clock in the morning um yeah and one of the producers like stopped me from going saying i just don't think why would you pay that? that we'll sort it out just take the night to sleep on it and it just feels so controlled and so um ironically yeah yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. and, and that, that so that leads us into so the show itself is a pressure cooker the show itself is quite a challenging environment to be in for all involved mm. we know that there are from 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 previous guests i've had on we know that there are moments where your producers are making it spiky yeah and yeah making it spiky blah blah blah, blah but it, it's on TV, but this kind of stuff happens in real life. Like you'd have a particular social circle where some people will make it spiky and say things and hurt another sure. human. Sure, it's on a lower, lower scale. Not a lower scale because it's the, the same feelings are the same feelings. Mine just happened to be on TV, and it's all. Like but it's made. but it's it, like you've said, it's a pressure cooker, and other people have said it's a pressure cooker. It's mm. not. It's not a normal social situation where you may have known those people for ten years. Yeah. This is these are people that you've literally only known for like weeks. I've, I mean, I was forty at the time. I'd never been to a dinner party like any of this. I mean, I don't think I have. So it isn't really the norm. You know, you might go out with. <laughs> but a few I, friends. I loved every single one of them for for them individually. Just yeah, as a group. It just, but but of it course, was it never was never going to happen. It was it was always going to be a a group of people that had a clash. For the camera, because that's what we want to see mm. on TV. We want yeah, yeah, the, yeah. we want the EastEnders, and that's what yeah. that show provides. But all of that was kind of stressful, yada yada yada. What happened afterwards? And I can remember it happening. Actually, I can remember seeing the news, mm. and um, and then your life changes for forever. So whilst the show is being shown, I think it was towards the end of the series or the season you were arrested would you like mm. to give us a bit of context to what happened i know this is really difficult for it you wasn't to talk about. very nice no it wasn't very <laughs> nice and we've spoken extensively about it and i must also tell people i reached out to george not the other way around oh and you're not being paid just to clarify that too george is not being paid to be in fact he's it's cost him <laughs> <laughs> to be here yeah <laughs> he's paid for his own hotel he's come to, northampton. <laughs> he's come to beautiful <laughs> northampton which he's had a great time so far haven't you, you know what it's it, no it's actually a pleasure to come up and see you because we've talked a lot and it's, we have talked it's, it's a lot but he's not getting paid he's actually paid out of his own money to have a hotel to buy the petrol to get here so i just want to make that one million percent clear he's not being paid i will take him out for dinner afterwards to say thank you but that's it yeah a restaurant in northampton <laughs> Happy is his meal. payment happy meal yeah <laughs> and you actually kfc <laughs> uh, <okay>. <laughs> but no so george definitely isn't being paid i i invited him on because i realized that the, the there hadn't been two sides heard to this story and i wanted mm. to give you the space to speak your truth well there'd been one side heard and then a lot of other people's sides heard who jumped on the bandwagon yeah um it's funny how i didn't realize like my life capitulated over 24 hours it was 
it was horrendous. Um, like one minute you've like life's good and you're kind of happy. Somebody starts putting a bit of shit out there in the papers, making some digs and I sent one message to, cause I hadn't spoken to April for four weeks when we split up after we'd been to, you know, finished filming winter foot Ventura. I've been down to London several times and everything had been great. Um, and I sent one message to her flatmate, Jose, who people might remember off the show. And I just sent a message to the effect of, for legal reasons, I can't verbatim. But listen, this is getting a bit silly now. All the stuff in the paper um, about, you know, April needing therapy and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of things that happened, which a lot, well, only a few people know, and the public may never, never know. Um, well, April got April got me arrested, by the way. It wasn't three anonymous women uh, who won't let their name be heard. Yeah. Um, on the Wednesday night when I'm supposed to have my children, which I have done for the last five years every Wednesday, I happened to have three Met Police officers drive up from London bang down my door at like 10 to 12 midnight. Are you doing this on a Wednesday? Because has she told you I've had, I, I don't know. I'm speculating here, but has she told you to do that on a Wednesday? Because that's when he doesn't have his children because she wants my children to see me get arrested. Yeah. It was the one night that I didn't have my children. Um, so they weren't there. On that night. Just happened to not be there. Because every other Wednesday, every yeah. single Wednesday. Every single you have Wednesday. You, yeah. yeah. It has been for like five years since. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was picked up. Um, she had made, well, I'll tell you what happened. They, they picked me up at 10 to 12. I had to sort out the dogs. I had to get changed. I handed over my phones and, and laptop and everything. And um, yeah, I went to... Um, was the police station they said you've been uh, accused of control and coercive behavior um and i was like Fucking hell. by april banbury not by three women and like everybody in the world thinks that i got arrested because three women have come forward because i was a nasty man yeah that's what was in the press that's what was in the press um yeah god if you read papers yeah. <laughs> who does uh, well <sighs> Apparently people do because you get messages you like get, that. You do, yeah. Um, sat in a cell. They s strip you down, pair of tracksuit trousers, tracksuit top, you know, like proper cell block H job. Um, plimp soles. I wasn't allowed to wear my own shoes. Had a glass of water. And then that, that was me for 13 hours. No food. Didn't have a toilet roll. Nothing. Wow. But I was under the Mets custody, not West Mercia. They've been amazing with other stuff, you know, like I had a death threat through the door. I was under gas and they were like patrolling my house and everything. Yes. They were great, you know, advised like CCTV and everything. Um, but yeah, then the the interviewing officer would, didn't get up to like three o'clock the next day. So I've been awake like 36, 40 hours, knackered. And they started reeling off these things that I'd done. Like I locked her in the apartment when we were on the show. Okay. You know, hotels that have like the cards that go in <laughs> yeah. and you take them out and that's how you get in. Yeah. On the inside, they've got a handle. Yes. You just pull it you down and you walk it. out. This is a very difficult thing for you to talk about. So we wanted just to create a nice, happy atmosphere. That's why we've had so yeah. many laughs and stuff. Um, we've had an absolute blast. We it? have had an absolute blast because we did, I didn't want this to be just an awful PTSD kind of situation for you. I wanted you to feel like mm. the first time that it goes out publicly that it's not the worst situation that you've ever been in. All the headlines and everything use the word abuser. Yeah. 
in inverted commas. Well, you thinking, haven't actually well, it's inverted been... commas, so yeah. therefore it's They can not put real. that on there. They can put an inverted yeah, comma on you. and use a word abuser without ever, ever being that. convicted. <laughs> Bless my mum. My mum turned up that day. She says, I've been into the garage. I saw you on the front and I bought all 17 papers. Aww. I went, Thank you. Oh, bless but there is her. probably another half a million <laughs> copies <laughs> all across the country. Um, that was just probably one of the sweetest things. She said, well, should I go up there and buy some more? I'm like, oh. I don't think it's going to help. That must have been awful uh, for her. Oh, it's, it, it's completely, um, it's changed my family's life. Uh, it would never be the same. No. Uh, it would well, never be the same. My be, children being sep- uh, educated in separate classrooms, spat on, you know, your dad's an abuser and all that kind of stuff. It's like, it's a, it's a weird oxymoron for me because I've got all of this happening publicly and where I live in Malvern, people know me yeah. and the people that know me are like, oh, what a load of bullshit. How are you doing, mate? Do you want to, you know, how are you doing? Go for a drink. Da, da, da. How are you? Everybody in my community who knows me those hundreds and thousands, you know, thousands of people are great, been amazing. You know, people that don't know me around, there might be a little whisper, but nothing's, nothing said like, oh God, that's George off Meredith for sight. Yeah. Um, but anybody who knows me, who I've dealt with, who I've done mortgages for, who I've helped with finance, who I've worked with, who have been friends, or I've played rugby with, um, the rugby club has been an amazing place for me. Yeah. That's a proper safe space. Yeah. Because they know me. Yes. They've gone to battle with me. Like they, they know who I am. Well, because of course, before you mentioned the other day, you were a professional rugby player. You broke your back at, what was it? 19. 19. Yeah. But you've got quite a big connection with the rugby community. I still. love rugby. I just, I just think it's just such a, a great sport. Um, everybody connects with different sports, but with rugby, you know, you, you if you're going to smash into somebody to protect somebody else, uh, it's instant bonding, like yeah. completely instant bonding. And I love the game. I love the aesthetics of the game and, and what have you. I'm actually playing in a couple of weeks' time. I got got the message today on the on the veteran circuit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I love the game, and it's as, and it's a safe space. And I've I've known these people for like 20 years. They know me. Yeah. Like, and they're like, "What a load of shit that was." Yeah. Like that's not George. What's most upsetting is the fact that there's going to be another woman out there who is ridiculously, tragically scared. Oh, I work with some of them. Yeah, you work with them, but they won't go to the police because they're scared of it happening and it not getting the justice that it deserves. I I work with some people. When they are genuine. In in, in danger every day. Yeah. Yeah. And I work with those women. they're too scared. And that's what I really want to say this out loud. This is really important, this bit. As part of my client base, I have women that are currently living in dangerous situations. It's disgusting. Nobody knows they come to me. They have to say they're coming here for different reasons. Like as a multidisciplinary clinic, we can say they're coming here for physio or osteo or whatever. So nobody knows they see me. I'm the only person that knows what's going on in their lives and I have to create a safety plan for them. And, and, And I don't want to diminish the stuff that they're going through by uh, being part of a society that just ignores it when people are falsely accused. So ultimately I wanted to give you the space to tell your side of the story because we have to change this culture of just being able to say what you want about whoever, whenever, Mm. just because it, it, you know. But also she said what she wants. And you haven't had your voice. Um, I, I can't. Yeah. They won't listen to me. No. They won't listen to me. And there's times where it's been really, really a dark, dark place. Well, for your children to be spat I... on, for God's sake, that doesn't get much worse than that as a parent. Yeah. Like. I don't know how you're not in prison for <laughs> reacting Well, I, I to that. actually messaged the, the Met Police the other day. I'd never get a response. But I messaged no. the other day saying, I'm actually a prisoner yeah. outside of prison. Yeah. I might as well go and tell my truth. Yeah throw you all the evidence Well, because you've told them that you're doing this haven't you I told the them i'm doing this yeah i'm going to say everything yeah there's certain bits that we can't say right now yeah but do you know what i might as well go to prison yeah i'll do it and do you know what what pisses me off is that people can just make false accusations make shit up yeah no evidence whatsoever yeah yeah but for her to make false accusations she ruined my life yeah. ruined my kids lives yeah my parents lives who you know, we're, we're battling cancer and all sorts at the moment, which she knew at the time. Yeah. 
Um, and she could walk away scot-free after ruining lives. In the, I've looked into it. In the judicial system, in the criminal system, if you make false allegations and you are perverting the course of justice, you should be sentenced to go to jail. Yeah. But it never happens. No. And until the police and the CPS start taking action against these people that are causing these consequences. It's never going to end. Happen. It's never going to, it's, yeah. nev it's never going to stop. It's, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Because you can do it. The thing is, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about abuse or whether we're talking about racism or you can accuse somebody Any, of something. Anything. And then. Shoplifting, anything. Once that person has been found not guilty, you just walk away. Oh, Scott. And, how, and by the way, how much does that cost the taxpayer if it goes to court? It costs. Hundreds of thousands, thousands of pounds thousands every of pounds. single time when someone is found innocent, we, by the way, have paid for that, for that false accusation to go to court, mm. for that person who's falsely accused to be found innocent. Absolutely. And they walk away scot-free. Everybody free. in the public, are, are taxpayers paying for it. Yeah. But right now, all I can think about is the fact that I've personally paid for it, like my family. I've lost, of course you have, yeah. My business has gone yeah. through the floor. Yeah. I've lost... You could argue to say that, you know, people within your circle that decide not to stick around, you know, if it's the biggest test, something like this. Yeah. And I'm very, very lucky that I've got, you know, a, a core of people that have kept me steady. But I've lost, I've lost that. My, my children are now growing up with this situation. It's not going to leave them. How stressful for all of you. Because your dad has terminal cancer, doesn't he? Well, yeah, he was he was diagnosed with um, cancer. Yeah, he's eighty nine. He's not great. We've got two weeks of radiotherapy now. Um, like, sorry. No, please. This is this is the truth of it. This is what you're dealing with on top of everything. But he was else. ill. He was ill at the time, and April knew this, and she still went for it. Yeah. Like fuck. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you even do that? It's fun when I look at it proportionally, say out of a hundred people that I meet, five might not like me. Yeah. Happy with that. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. It's Whatever. I meet a hundred people. I might not have anything to say about five of them. Yeah. But when you've got somebody quite vicious. Yeah. And another person quite vicious. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly it can spiral. Yes. Um, because they say, oh, well, you can get a slice of the pie. I got a message from one of my ex-girlfriends, um, not ex-girlfriend, ex date sort of thing, saying, George, what the fuck's going on here? She had a message from somebody with no followers, no. I've actually got the Instagram handle, which I'm trying to give to the police to say, who is this person? Saying, we need to shut this man down. He drugs his victims. Wow. I wouldn't even know how to buy marijuana. <laughs> like, I, I have not got a clue. <laughs> the drugs is victims. And have you ever felt weird? He, da, 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 and he, he preys on women and all this. It's like, who are you? No followers, no posts, no Always nothing. the same, faceless accounts. Like, I'm a journalist. I'm taken to it. 16 other women have come forward. It's like, yeah, all right. I, I, I actually I've slept with less than that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a complete Lothario. <laughs> But, but like it's like what 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 is the matter with people and luckily she screenshotted all this and sent it to me it's like okay well so and then, and then my other ex took me to dubai to get out of the country after all this shit it's like well if i was that much bad of a person yeah why are the people that i have had you know intimate relationships with asking me if i'm all right are you are you okay and don't you have full access to your children as well all the time whenever you yeah. want to see them yeah. And if you were an abusive monster, I'm sure that that would be a bit difficult to see your children. Somebody rang social services. No. And the fact that they didn't even talk to me or come out and see me or anything says a lot. So based on the evidence I've seen and based on the fact that I know you have a friendly relationship with some of your exes and the police have taken no action and, you know, so on so forth there's so many different reasons that you have the right to have your say mm -hmm. how does it feel to actually say all of this publicly for the first time well this is the first time i've spoken about anything um 
I've never anything that you read in the papers has got nothing to do with me. I've You've never had spoke, no I've comment. Never, I've had never never spoken to a journalist. You've had no right to reply, have you? At no all? right to reply. No uh, right of privacy. Yeah. Either. Like my name shouldn't have gone into the papers. Yeah, because you've not been arrested. convicted of anything. Not been charged or convicted of uh, uh, nothing. Nothing. Um, and I certainly have been questioned by allegations from three women. Yeah. It's just, I, d I don't know how they get away with it. I rang um, the Sun newspaper and I said, look, hi, I'm just ringing because I want to understand, like, if I take, if, if, if you get taken to court, do you have to provide the sources for all of your, you know, detail that you put into the paper and show that it's true and everything like that? Yeah, we do. Okay, that's brilliant. Uh, my name's George. Yeah. I was unmarried at first sight and I will be taking you to court. Um, I don't, I'm still on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, holding my phone. I'm still holding it up to my, <laughs> my hand. Um, I'm going to be taking you to court. And now that you've told me that, I've recorded this call, just like you told me at the beginning that you're recording it for uh, training and whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever purposes. Um, and he was like, go for it, mate. Do what you want. Couldn't give a shit. Bye. Wow. Like, oh, thank you. You're, you're a terrible person. <laughs> Uh, but that's, that, that's the Sun newspaper, isn't it? It's yeah. Top. So they don't give a shit. They were literally, yeah. their idea of a BAFTA is a hashtag of somebody, you know, you know. I, I, I don't want to say her name purely because I'm devastated that she's not here. Yes, I know but, what you mean, yeah. You know, people take their own lives. Yes, they do. Because of the shit that happens publicly. And when does this stop? When does it stop? How many people have to take their own lives? How many people's lives have to be, how many kids of these people have to be bullied at school? Mm. How many people's families have got to go through hell before we say, do you know what? They don't have a judge and jury. No. Until we are being charged or at, le at least charged, there is no reason that anyone should have seen your name in the paper. No. And I was specifically told by the Met Police, West Mercia Police, and my barrister, uh, my my solicitor at the time, duty one because it's one thirty in the morning. Yeah. Plus, I don't have a solicitor on on call. Speed dial. Hi Ben. Well, I couldn't be on speed dial because I had my fucking phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, yeah. who, who am I going to call? Like, I, 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 don't, I don't I don't know. Get me the duty one. We'll yeah. Sure, this is a misunderstanding. We'll sort it out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, they categorically told me that nobody would know about this and it won't be released to the press by West Mercia, the Met. It's either me or April. So someone other than you and the and the, police. and the police has gone to the papers. Yeah, pretty immediately. Yeah. When the Sun rang up Worcestershire West Mercia Police to ask, they said a forty-year-old man from Worcestershire has been arrested for cross control. How does that lead why, to you? Why are they ringing them anyway in the first place? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, who's like who's controlling who here? Yeah. Who's being coercive? And we have to say this, and again, I want to really stipulate that neither me or George, especially, you know, because this subject is so sensitive, I've worked with women that are in abusive situations, and abuse doesn't always mean physical abuse or sexual abuse. Mm. It can be coercive control yeah. and all of that. Neither me or George are saying that this behavior is okay, that, you know, women shouldn't go to the police if they're in danger or if they're being controlled. What we're saying is it's not okay to be falsely accused either or to falsely accuse Just someone. don't make up shit. Just don't make Just shit Just live up. your life as a truth. That's yeah. it. Just don't yeah. fucking make up shit because the consequences, you know, might make you feel better for five minutes, but it actually can ruin people's lives forever. And can I just say, like, people are going to hear you today and go, he sounds fine. He sounds like he's really got his shit together. He's laughing. He's joking. That's because hopefully we've created a place. Uh, yeah, but I've, I've been to some fucking really dark places. Talk over to me the last about those dark months. places like, because people won't have that context yet. It's really hard to describe, but you know, with with not leading the same life as I used to have, and just being in the dark with my just my walls it's just you kind of almost get to a point where i'm just going to live my life again from the youngest moment that i can remember and go through everything and try and remember every experience that i had that was potentially negative and where was my involvement in that what how did i contribute was it positive negative um so you've psychoanalyzed yourself basically 
to the best of my ability to do yeah. so. Yeah. Which I guess this is the best I could do really. But is it fair to say there was a moment where you considered whether being here, as in alive, was an option? Mm. Because I know there were early, early Well, you've days. seen the raw I've footage seen, of yeah, the I've documentary. Seen, yeah. 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 And and you did consider, we spoke briefly there about people mm. taking their own lives, but that was a serious thought for you at mm. one point, wasn't it? Mm. I just thought, what benefit am I giving to anybody? Like, is it easier if I'm just... If I'm not here, it'll all go away. Yeah. Are you, are you thinking about your kids in that moment? Mm, just kids, family. Uh, yeah. Because at that I'm point, wrong. it was you were getting death threats and all sorts. And I was baking in my kitchen with the kids, and a handwritten letter came through my letterbox. We know where you live. Kill yourself, or we'll kill you. Yeah. What I the mean, fuck do you do with that? Yeah, that's your family home. And then I had police patrolling my house and and all sorts. None of that needed to happen. And the police would not look at your evidence to show that this could West have Mercy happened. were amazing. They yeah. were the ones that put me under gas and uh, yeah. all this and you know. Um But the Met turned up with like tasers and fucking glocks and whatever it was they got on them. I don't know. But shut your dogs up or we'll shut them up. All oh, right. Which okay. for anyone that's got dogs, I mean that's horrific. Don't touch my dogs. Are you, you, Don't touch my dogs. Why my would I mean, what the yeah. hell are they? Why you've turned up in fluorescent jackets at ten to midnight, making loads of my, bloody noise? You expect my lurcher, who's eleven, yeah. not to go? Who the fuck are you? Yeah, or what are you doing? My toy poodle would kick up a fuss at that. Yeah, you know you're gonna hear him. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he thinks he's the pit bull, so you better back <laughs> off because he's he's got this. <laughs> He's going to protect me. When it comes to crunch time, it's like, oh, I'll have a wee. <laughs> <laughs> On the floor, yeah. and you're going to have to clear it up. Yeah. <laughs> but, but shut your dogs But for up. five minutes, I was Rocky Balboa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I love the mm. fact that they're like, shut your dogs up. Well, oh, yeah, okay. It definitely works like that, doesn't it? Please, mm. can you be quiet? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The police are here. They don't want you to make noise. Yeah. All right, mate. Keep yeah, your wig on. <laughs> just absolutely fucking horrendous. One, but, one of the worst experiences of my life. Yeah. And I think that can't be underestimated because it's been 12 months. So, of course, a bit like childbirth, you forget how painful it is, you know, until you revisit it again. Um, but I think people will have... That's what we're talking about. I did it four times. <laughs> yeah. No wish. Easy peasy, <laughs> easy, lemon peasy. squeezy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, the truth is that although we are laughing and joking to some degree today, I know that there was a moment for you where mm. you did contemplate whether it was worth even being here. And yeah. this categorically did not happen. And, you know, it will all come out. The truth always does. And, and I think you saw the message I sent to the police. I said, I want to go to court now. Yeah. He, because you, I want to provide You've said, evidence. look, I want my day in court because I need to mm. be able to show yeah. in in a court of law this this will be quashed i need to be able to show but the thing is did, am i right in thinking that someone left the met police and then they didn't even bother reassigning nothing happened else? with my case for about nothing. nine months yeah it was just left on the shelf while your life was slowly yeah. falling apart yeah so the reason that i asked you one is because i think people need to hear the other side of the story and and although i'm sure there's lots of people that will still want to believe you or the big bad wolf because... oh yes fine you don't know me it's yeah, literally that... not a problem the people that know me that's that's who i give like my attention to and they will tell me honestly what they think good friends will say to me look you're fucked up here yeah they might look at this podcast and say look you you fucked up there, they won't because like... we won't let it go out well... unless you feel comfortable with <laughs> but it. Do, you, do you know what i mean well, any, anything that i do i've got true friends who you know if i say like like i'd say to them oh look i think you're dicing with you know a bit of a situation here. yeah like a a friend of mine recently was courting uh, with somebody uh, yeah. he shouldn't be courting yeah. with. It's going to ball up in your face. You're in the fucking wrong. Yeah. And a, and a true friend would turn around and say, "Yeah, I fu I'm I fucked up. I'm dealing with it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Fucked up. Which is what's happened. Now. Yeah. You'll be glad to know. But I've I've got those those people, but and I appreciate them. But I also appreciate you, you don't underestimate how many 
people have who don't know me who've taken it and looked at it with a, an intellectual view of thinking right this is reality tv how much that actually happens yes and the support and love that has come through from so many people has been amazing i think for every ten thousand nice messages which i'm sorry if i haven't got back to you i just can't physically get through <laughs> for the ten thousand there's there's one or two really shit ones yeah and some of them are really really awful really really awful but it's i think that's just way the unexpected human mind works in this situation where you focus on the negative. Yes. I wasn't prepared for it. If I had the same mind now, my new mind. Yeah. <laughs> Love my it. new mind back then, it wouldn't have bothered me. And I think I'd have spoken straight away. Yeah. Because I'd have been strong enough to. Well, because you you know now how this thing goes. Yeah. I'd have I'd have straight onto Facebook, Instagram, whatever. But my mind back then was like, oh, shit. Hide. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just just fucking disappear. Yeah. And also, when the Met Police turned around and said, just be very careful with what you do. It's like, why should I have to be careful when somebody has been completely erratic? And you've been erratic the way you arrested me, by the way. And, Put me in handcuffs. And Channel 4, tell me just briefly <laughs> how they supported you through this as well. Well, I can't really describe it, can I? Because they fucking didn't. They they put up a thing to say, oh, um, Channel 4 knew nothing about it. It's fucking legal team. I've asked them for a data access request. However you want to put it. I've asked three three different ways. Data access request, an SAR. Uh, you know about one of these, don't yeah. you? And GDPR yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. I've asked for all information pertaining to myself about the show. Because uh, I've made a complaint to Ofcom, uh, which I think pretty much a lot of cast members will do. Um but I've I've asked for a data access request uh, and an SAR. We can't give that to you because it actually involves um, information on other people on some of the filming. I was yeah. like, no, no, I just want the voxes yeah. of me singly. It doesn't involve anybody else. Yeah. And it will show that you're making me say these things. Yes. Because it's all there. They won't give it to me. Wow. They will only hand it over if it goes to court. Wow. So it's got to cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds to go to court to get it to court. Yeah. So if there's a billionaire listening who <laughs> yeah. likes who likes justice in the world, <laughs> DM me. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people DM you if they do want to help you out? Oh, like, just on Instagram, just whatever. On Instagram, yeah. you'll find I didn't it. have Facebook for six months um, because I just I just came off it. Yeah. Um, because I just didn't. You couldn't deal with what was coming. Yeah, and then I went private for quite some time. I actually de deactivated my account for a little bit. Um, and then my 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 friend Damo, my my best man, my my he's like a brother to me. He um he said, "Why the fuck are you hiding away?" Yeah, you haven't done anything wrong. All you're doing is adding an issue. Yeah, you're compounding it by hiding away. I said, well, if I hide away, if I Cancel everything down. I'm I'm signed. I'm Disney. He says, and what the fuck does that look like? Yeah, yeah, it's true. But you don't know what else to do because no one's guiding you. This is you on your own now. So not prepared for the yeah. situation. Like never in in a million years did I expect this to be a situation. But now I look back on it with the with with how I'm sort of more educated with the yeah. experience and that. How fucking calculated, like how ridiculous. And I just wish I had this mindset before the show because I'd have never fucking done it. Well, also what we've said is um, off camera is that you have gone through such a learning curve that mm. you've had to really be very reflective and reach out to people, mm. you know, that, that, that you felt that you had done wrong, that you've now become friends with, you know, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Like, you, anybody could probably think, well, most people could probably think of a time where in the past they, they were in the wrong, but you know, were too stubborn enough to admit it at the time. And I've gone back to a couple of people just with this journey with what's happened. Um, and you know, there, there was one particular girl who's, lovely lovely girl i wasn't ready for a relationship yeah. at that point i didn't realize i wasn't ready because i hadn't taken the time to make sure that i was but i didn't know what that meant at the time this is before the show is before it? way before the show yeah um and i was like oh like i feel like i need to say something and i got in touch and i just 
I just openly said, look, you probably don't want to hear from me, but I do, I'd, I'd like to talk to you. It's like, okay. And I spoke to her and I just said, listen, I really need to apologize for the fact that when we were dating for a little bit, you were under the impression that I was cool, stable, got my shit together and, and everything. And I, I, I absolutely didn't at the time. And, and I cut it off without any, you know, kind of thought of your welfare. It was like, okay, pff, I need to just be, I'm not ready for this. And you had no closure for me. And I just need you to know that what I know now is that I should never have entertained being in a position to even speak to anybody on that sort of level or give off the impression that I was ready for a relationship because I wasn't. And I want to, I want to apologize to you and I don't know what I can do to make it better. And it just like went silent and she just went, thank you. Oh, and I was like, course nervously i go i'll just give it just give it a fucking massive speech <laughs> is, that is, that all <laughs> is that is that all you got to say surely there's some more can you call me a wanker or something? <laughs> um it's like let's meet up so, so we met up for coffee got on really really well um we're friends now and yeah i can't give it away too much but you know the the, the events yeah. that i've been to um you know the functions and stuff that i've been to with her and you know we get on really really well and it's like oh my god selfishly i feel a lot better but also for her it was amazing because she's like she understands that's why george did it. yeah okay it wasn't me that was the problem it was actually george but that's what these 12 months has given you hasn't it it's like we said there yeah. you've been very reflective although in in what you've been accused of you've done nothing wrong because you've stepped back a little bit and sort mm. of spent a little bit more time with family and um keeping yourself safe really you've had time mm. to look at yourself from a different point of view and you've definitely from the conversations that we've had not necessarily today but certainly personal conversations that we've had you've definitely been through a process of self-discovery <laughs> I know it mm. sounds cheesy but you have come out of this more resilient more determined yeah and one of the things that I really admire about you is that this definitely has destroyed other people's lives mm -hmm. and i think that it's really important that when you've been abused and you're someone that's been abused in this situation mm -hmm. because there's been lies told about you your life has been completely there's a lot of people in my position that don't speak out though. they don't speak out and i mm -hmm. want to commend you on that because whichever side of the coin you're on be it that you've been abused or that you've been falsely accused of abuse mm -hmm. it's life changing any form of abuse, any yeah. form of abuse yeah. It's life-changing mm. and it is something that will always be with you now. You'll never be able to walk down a street mm. without somebody. I mean, okay, maybe you will in 50 years or whatever, if you're still here. You'll be 91. <laughs> <laughs> if people are still talking about it then, please get on, move on. Move I will on. actually be 91. I know. That was quick maths from you. <laughs> I know. Somebody didn't know what fucking year it was about <laughs> two hours ago. Are we in 2023? It's like. Cut it, cut it. We're not doing this today. <laughs> she doesn't know what decade we're in, let yeah. alone anything else. God, but I know I'm that's really great. clever, actually. Um, well, I'm not actually. 50 plus 41 makes 91. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm quite proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my numbers is not my thing, clearly. Yeah. But no, you won't always be known for it, but it will mm. always be there as a shadow. It's a haunting. It's a haunt. It, it's certainly what's happened has been haunting. Mm. And I, and I know that you can't go into everything, but what I want this to be for you is the first step to telling the truth. Yeah. And maybe when the next, this chapter's over, we'll talk again and I can say whatever. Yes. Whatever I and like. I will bring yeah. you back on to do that. Mm. Once this chapter's done, what we're saying at the moment is please, please, everybody when you hear of someone being accused of something sometimes it's the truth and sometimes it's not and because the british pre take press take with a pinch of salt yeah. take it with a pinch of salt a because fucking bucket of salt a bucket of salt yeah, <laughs> yeah. a whole bucket yeah. a big one because the british press will name certain people because they're not afraid to do that because you don't have a massive legal team you know that you are just oh. george from maths you can't afford to take them down so if they can get away with it they will and I kind of realize from being a therapist, this is kind of one of the things I've seen all kind of 
things in over the last 20 years as a psychotherapist and I've seen people be falsely accused and one case springs to mind and I won't mention him but he was accused of being um he, he was accused of sexually abusing his sister and he had to go through three years of hell she she falsely accused him he was found innocent and I believed him from day one mm. and um we worked together for this sort of knock-on effect that that had on his life the anxiety and the shit that he went through and it's awful and she she was lying and a jury decided that and he's thankfully been able to put his life back together but he's one of many that i've worked with that have been falsely mm -hmm. accused and i've seen how it ruins lives but isn't it worrying how many people you've seen yeah how many more people out there are there? there there'll be so many this guy that just got released last week after 11 years 11 in years prison. yeah yeah his whole life pretty much has been Fuck. damaged he, and he will have trauma as a result of that. You will have trauma as mm -hmm. a result of this. And although I support women and men that have been abused to tell their truth. I support humans that have been abused. I don't think it's... It's like not a gender issue, no. no. It's not okay to do that to another person, but it's certainly mm -hmm. not okay to to use a narrative to destroy someone's life that is not based on truth. So I really wanted to do this today, and I'm so glad we have. Mm -hmm. But before we before we close... What dessert? would you? Yeah, dessert. Well, there's we're going to give some ice cream. <laughs> For what is it? Black Forest. There Gatto. will be. There will be uh, a sequel. Let's put. It there that will way. be a sequel. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever happens, there'll be a sequel. And what would you like people to take away from this about you? This this episode. Um. I don't, I don't. I don't know really. I mean, we've we've had a reasonably serious conversation. Yeah. There's been a few laughs and whatever, but I think it's just like. The, the detrimental side of 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 what people think are facts yeah like three women no it was actually one April. woman it's just a kind of i don't know just reality tv is not reality tv please think about that and also before you write that message that could potentially really scar somebody just think twice. Yeah. And best situation, just don't fucking do it. Yeah. Especially if you don't know who they are. If your husband has done something to you, message them, do whatever. That's between you two. Don't seek somebody out from the public who's getting a bit of shit and jump on the bandwagon. Which is what happened to you, but it was worse than that, wasn't it? The messages it were horrific. pretty horrific. And yeah. I've I've heard some of them, so I can say oh, that. things like, oh, I hope you go to prison. Your daughter should change their names and discuss the view. What was that model? Well, she called us that. I don't know if she was. Well, she was a model. We won't say who she is, but yeah. she says something about your, your children as well. Like it was... It was... Oh, just... Oh. Your phone's in the other room. You read it to me earlier, so I can I can yeah. say that I've heard them. We can't remember them word for word right now. We could read them out, but there's no need to. They're pretty mm, horrific messages. No, I mean it will all come out. In it the will end, all come but, out in the end. Yeah. I I also feel that you know, even myself, we've watched, we've all watched reality TV, whether yeah. it be Big Brother or whether it be Maths or Love Island or whatever. I haven't actually watched Love Island, but you know, we've all watched it and gone. Yeah, oh, you have. You just. I, I genuinely yeah. haven't. I've <laughs> never. I someone tried to explain the concept of Love Island to me, and I just couldn't get my head around it. I've never, I tell you, I tell a lie. I tell a lie. I've watched about half an hour of the Australian Love Island, and I did get into it for half oh, an hour. Days. Fair dues, mate. <laughs> and I did press serious record. <laughs> I pressed serious record on it. Yeah. And then I realised I was never going to watch it, so I deleted it. Oh, okay. So I'd, I'd seen half an hour of the Australian yeah. Love Island. So that that was a lie. I have watched half an hour, but I don't get it. But but what I will say is of the reality TV. But actually, the concept of that is I mean, there's editing involved, but they actually film twenty four seven. Yeah. So you get to That's see. That's the difference. Yeah. That's where Big Brother worked and should have worked and because everything you was in watch real time, it any as time. Well. yeah 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 i mean there was a point where you could be in your house sat watching somebody in a house yeah 24 7 yeah it's like a live link the whole yeah, time yeah it was yeah you're right there was that but that doesn't happen with a lot of reality tv no, so certainly not this one. even i have sometimes got wrapped up into the oh my god i can't believe and then when you come back out of it you go oh hang on is there is a structure there is a yeah. theme it's okay we don't need to get so in but it's fun and if you looked at it it's the same way you look at a soap opera you know it's a script 
It may not be as scripted mm. as EastEnders, but it's basically a script. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> oh, my God. I've just shit myself. <laughs> what have you seen? You've got a man with no skin on it. What the fuck is that? That is hilarious. Oh, I've just lost it. Where's the top bits? Oh, I've lost it. It's blown as a cow. Oh, fuck. That's the funniest thing. Oh, this cow proper killed him. Like he wasn't dead before. That's so funny. Uh... Did you do that on purpose? What the fuck? Where's the rest of it dead? <laughs> What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> oh dear. I feel a bit sorry for him. Mess. <laughs> I just remember we're in a basement again. The top of his head's over there. <laughs> Don't put your keys in it. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the shit out of me, that dude. Just <laughs> <laughs> something like The Exorcist. It's like, oh, she's wrapping up. She's wrapping it all up now, and there's a fucking dead person. <laughs> oh, I see. It is happening. It is happening. <laughs> Okay, I definitely need to go for number one, a wee. <laughs> <laughs> number two, a tissue. Sort your face out. <laughs> Do you want to take a break? <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Oh, <laughs> my God. You <laughs> genuinely <laughs> jumped. I'm going to come back to that. We can't put it back. We have to leave it out and describe. <laughs> Right, okay, so we've just had a little break, haven't we, George? It's a bit worrying, I don't know how he goes back in. Well, yeah, it is a bit worrying. This is education for you. So, um, just so people are aware, yeah. George had the... Oh, my God. <laughs> George had the fright of his life um, because he found my model of the human body. Eric. Eric. <laughs> Eric, my nickname, everyone that doesn't know. So, <laughs> George is now putting together a brain. Um, so... He had the fright of his life. He jumped out of his skin. He was, you? It, was, you? it was extremely scary. Now, this is the model that I use to tell people how the brain links to the nervous system. Once it's not on the floor. Once it's it not on in. the floor and decombobulated. And essentially, there's this blue nerve, word, George. I know, I'm very clever. There's a blue nerve that runs through the central nervous system, which is apparent here that you could see oh, yeah. um, on camera. If you hold it up, George, just hold it up to the camera so that people can see. The, the lovely fella here. There's a blue nerve that runs through. That's the vagus nerve. So I use that as an educational piece. I didn't pre-warn George. And Billy's special prize. <laughs> is this corpse. A skinless man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell George that that was there. He saw it in the corner of his eye towards the end of our recording and nearly died. Yeah. So thank God you're still here. <laughs> he's in, he's in, no, he's not. No, he's not in shot. You have to lift yeah, him up. So, yeah. But he's a very useful piece of modelling for educational purposes only it's got nothing to do with being in a cellar i'm not a psychopath and well, we are both so well. <laughs> <laughs> just just him up a little bit just for the camera bit, yeah. so um because we have a taxi coming actually oh. i don't mean to rush the ending of this <laughs> podcast but we actually do have a taxi coming okay, where are you taking so me? <laughs> i'm taking you to somewhere very safe another dungeon <laughs> another yeah. dungeon mm. are you are you wanting to leave the listeners with a final um, this has been immensely um, brilliant spending this few hours with you. I didn't realise yeah. we've been talking for quite so long. But is there anything you want the listeners to take away? You said, don't believe what you see on reality TV. You know, take it with a bucket of salt. <laughs> yeah, what I would say is, you know, there, there's content there. You, yeah. you can't you can't deny that there's the content. But just remember, there's a lot of content that you that don't you haven't see. seen. Yeah. And, and also, like some of it gets chopped into different places yes. and it's out of context. So the content is there, yeah. but it can be out of context. Think of it as a jumbled up puzzle that the pieces aren't quite putting, being put together the way they should be. Like a car boot. A car boot puzzle. Yeah, I get <laughs> yeah. it. You go around these different stalls and there's similar things on different things, but and they've it's bunched actually, it together. Yeah. Yeah. It's all kind of like, um, it's a bit of a mess really, but it's, it's there for your entertainment. And I think the That's point is, is 
is that <clears throat> I've actually been privy to the information, as I said before, so I can genuinely say that there's bits of the information that people haven't had, the bits of the story that people yeah. haven't had that eventually they will be able to hear and see perhaps. And in the meantime, I'd just say that when you are watching these shows and you're forming an opinion, please be mindful that everyone's human. We don't know all the facts and we mustn't yeah. jump to conclusions. But also aside from TV and reality TV and that, if you're personally going through something which is, you know it's shit, but you're scared to say something, just reach out yeah. to your closest and, and, and say. And and if you feel like you need to go and speak to an, an authority about it, go and do it. Yeah. You know, this is what you do yeah. for people. You've got people who are silenced in everyday life, yeah. but they come to you to be just to be able to talk. Just yeah. keep talking, communicate with people that you trust or professionals who can guide you safely yes yeah and mm. if you think that you're gonna you know go down to somewhere where you don't need to go because nobody needs to go there yeah do something about it yeah first yeah and if so if a reality tv and we have to be brief on this but a, a, another podcaster who hasn't been on reality tv who mm. was on my podcast was approached by married at first sight immediately mm. after the podcast went out really yeah well, that's what they do they target people they target people he's a very handsome man yeah. he's got a nice social media following he's not done any tv but he's got a good social media yeah. and and, me and he sent me the screenshot and i was like Mm, I actually sent that screenshot to Matt Maths, yeah. Matt Maths, yeah. and he sent a message back saying, "Tell him to run." <laughs> well, we've just, as I sat down, yeah, now, we were just said, saying somebody yeah. just told me they were going yeah. on married at first sight. I was like, "Good luck." Yeah, good luck with that because have a good think about it before you do it. And if you're gonna do it, and we're not gonna try and stop people to because you went on it and other people have gone on it, mm. and some people have had a good Hopefully, experience with the backlash that they've had, they might change the about change. it. Well, you would yeah. like to think that if. At least go into it with open eyes. You've heard Georgie's story. You've heard mm. Matt. You will have heard Thomas's by now as well if you're listening to this. Have your eyes wide open and make an informed decision if you're going to mm. do a show like that. But I personally want to say thank you for being here. I hope you will come it's back on pleasure. once you can. Oh, yeah. And we are certainly going to see each other on the 30th of September to support Thomas Hartley as Pam Sandwich Ooh, in Pam. Birmingham. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, Pam. Thank you, by the way, George. Oh, it's, it's been, been a pleasure. It's been such yeah. a laugh. And I, who knew that something so serious would end up in me laughing so much and you being so scared of my new friend? <laughs> Have you changed your tenor? <laughs> no, I will do that before we leave. Okay. <laughs> well done. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.